God's ordinances because they are not okay for us. It's so hard because we are wicked people. We, learn, we heard from the previous preacher that we need to delight in the word of God. For, but this would happen when we're not wicked, when we're righteous. So all the wicked people do not delight in the word of God. But they rebel against it because the word of God, God's ordinances stand in contrast to our own self-righteousness. The mask that we put on of our own self-righteousness in the church, in the society, it stands against our own self-righteousness. So, people try to stand against God's word, but God laughs because God is already enthroned. You see, God says in verse 6, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I have already set. God has made his decision. He has put his decision already and nobody can change that. So whatever scheming that goes on, it looks okay. People can fight worse, but the decision is done. God is enthroned up above. And what does he say? He said, I have set my son to rule over the world. Let me tell you a story of two young boys. There was a young boy in my class, and his math teacher failed him in the math examination. He looked at his answer sheet, and he realized that the examiner had erred. So he went to the examiner and said, maybe there is a mistake. I didn't do things wrong. And the examiner pulled his ear and slapped him in front of the class and said, do you think you are a god or somewhere, someone a follower of God that you are trying to make things right? Go back and sit in your chair. This boy came and sat in his chair, crying and heartbroken. There was another boy in my class and whose chemistry teacher said, bluntly in the class, you Christians, you call yourself children of God, will you ever do well at chemistry? It was hard and painful. I was witness to both of these things. But down through the years, time passed by. Teachers became old. These young boy, boys became men. The first boy now is the head of e-learning in the Middle East, heading four countries. He's my younger brother. The second boy is doing his PhD, almost finalized it, in, micro, in, in biosciences, learned all chemical formulas, almost about to do PhD, and about to graduate as a doctor now. He was my closest friend. You see, the problem is not this, that the teacher had challenged the capabilities of these men. The teacher had said, are you a follower of God, or are you Christian men, you Christian boys? Will you do well? The teacher had openly challenged the sovereignty of, the, of God and his blessings for his people. But God had shown in time what had happened. But the bigger thing is this. God says, you shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like potters. Now this is a judgment that Jesus would bring about. Now, if we don't look at the New Testament, we don't know if it is Jesus. But when we look at the New Testament, when we look back, we see that the king in authority, the king whom these teachers had made fun of, had mocked in public, he rules sovereign. We see his rule in our personal lives also. But beyond that, beyond that, he rules over all the politics of the world, whether the kings or the kingdoms would rise against him or not. There will be wars, of course. There is a war always waging in ourselves. But the king rules. The king is God's son. Therefore, God says, Now therefore, O kings, be wise. O head of education departments, O deans, O rulers, O governments, O principals, be wise, be warned rulers of the earth, and serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, because there is a God who is enthroned up above. How would you serve the Lord with fear? Is God trying to scare us? Oh no, let's be scared now. There is a big God out there, and He's going to win. Or, does He want us to really fear Him humbly, and also rejoice with trembling? We cannot rejoice with, tongue, tr or with trembling if there is deep fear within us that makes us scared. But you see, we can only rejoice because this King, this Son, is also just and merciful, you see. But He's not merciful for those that do not come under His fold. That is why verse 12 says, kiss the son. Kiss is a, 
in, in those times, kissing was a symbol of accepting or embracing one person. So kiss the son, lest him be angry, and you perish in the way. For those that do not embrace the sovereignty of God, the words are very clear. The ruler whom God has made, Jesus Christ, he will perish these people. But blessed are those who take refuge in him. Now how would you submit to God? Can you submit to God of your own accord? Our minds are at war. Thoughts in our minds conflict with each other. But God made a provision for that also. The son who made the ruler, he also sent for us to die for our sins, for our own weaknesses and problems. And therefore, we can always trust in him. Because he died for our sins, he died and rose again, so he's no more dead. He showed that he is even authoritative over death. But he lives forevermore, so that you and I forevermore can live for eternity with God as God's children. So no longer do we need to fear or submit to the rulers of the earth by being scared. But let's be rulers, uh, let's be God's people because our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is ruler over all, is our King, and we are blessed to take refuge in Him. People of God, remove your mask, remove your self-righteousness, and, and find refuge in God. God bless you.